we've gone over how to do a simple hello world p invoke and we made sure that these projects both build to the same directory but now let's take it up a level and let's go over how to pass parameters to your C++ functions and return results. First we're just going to deal with primitive values such as integers, booleans, and then we're also going to move into strings. And strings are a little bit complicated because in C++ a string is not actually a primitive value like it is in C Sharp. So it's going to be a little bit quirky, but there is ways to do it. So the first thing I want to do is let's just go with the classic add method. And it's just going to take two numbers and just return a plus b. And then we are going to export this. So I'll just copy paste that and change this to add. And it takes two integers. Oh, and this needs to be int. Okay. So now that should be good to export. Let's create another DLL import. And it's going to return an integer. It's going to be called add numbers. And it's just going to take two numbers. So as you can see so far, it's very trivial when you're just dealing with these primitive types. So now let's go ahead and call this function. I'm just going to write it out to the console. Add numbers. Do 5 plus 3. And let's give it a shot. And as you see, it's actually not going to work. Cannot find the entry point. And the reason that is, is because it's just called add here. But I wanted to call it something different so I could show you guys. You can specify the entry point manually. So I can just say add right here. And by default, it'll just use this. But since there is no add numbers in this source.cpp, we're going to manually specify the entry point. And now if we run, we get our 8. So it's very simple when you're just dealing with these primitive values like integers. Now I'm not going to go over all the simple primitive types like integers, floats, doubles, but I will put this link in the description and here you can see what C sharp type matches up to the C or C++ type. So you know, an int matches up to an int32, we just did that. Double matches up to a double, pretty self-explanatory and straightforward. So if you have any, if you're doing any like strange, if you're doing anything really unique, this could be helpful. So say you need an unsigned long, you'll know it's a unsigned int32. I want to go over passing in a string as a parameter. So as we see here, a C-sharp string or a string builder can be passed in as a const char array. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's create another function. This one's actually going to return a bool. So we're going to mix it up a little bit. And we're just going to call this is length greater than 5. And so it's going to take a const char array. And we'll just call it value. And then all we're going to do is return string len of value greater than 5. So of course these, function, these functions are pretty lame, but we're just doing examples. So let's go ahead and export this. DLL export. Make sure your signatures match. And let's go ahead and call this in C sharp. So let's go ahead and just copy this. Always got to be careful with the copy paste. Okay. So it's going to return a boolean. And we name the function is length greater than 5. So we can get rid of this entry point because it all matches. And then it's just going to take a string. So now let's test this out. Is length greater than 5? We'll say test. So this should actually return false. There we go. But if we do test with 
two, three T's, we get a true. Now the last example I want to show is returning a string, and this can be a little bit complicated. So let's go ahead and define a function, and as we recall, a string or a string builder matches up to a const char star. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're just going to create a function. It's going to be a const char array. That's what it's going to return. And we're just going to call this get name. And it's just going to return my name. And then let's go ahead and export this. It's going to be get name. Return the const char star. And not going to take any parameters here. So let's go back to our program.cs, import this function, get name, return a string, no parameters, and then we'll just call it and write out the name to the console. So let's give this a shot, you know, it should work. String matches up with const char star. Let's see what it does. And it doesn't actually work. We don't we don't see anything. Now, why is this? Well, if we look at our source.cpp, we create this const char array, but then it gets destroyed when this function finishes. It gets cleaned up, and then we just return literally nothing. What we need to do is we need to allocate this string in memory so it doesn't get cleaned up when it goes out of scope in this function. And to do that, we're going to use a function called string. And we're going to have to include comdef.h to use this function. And all this function takes is the string, but not just any string. It needs to be a wide string. So you need to put an L in front of this. And then this function also returns a B string. So instead of returning a const char star, we're going to return a B string. And we can update that up here as well. Now, if we go back to our program.cs, we're still going to return a string from git name, but we need to specify that git name is going to return a B string so that this manage code knows how to deal with that. So we can say return marshall as unmanaged type dot B string. Okay, so now let's give this a shot, and we should see it right out to the console. And there we go, Sean. Now you might be thinking, wait, hold up. You're allocating this memory, you're allocating the string, but you never clean it up. And that's okay because our managed C Sharp knows how to clean up this B string. So you're not going to be getting any memory leaks from using this. That's going to do it for this tutorial. So we went over how to pass in primitive values such as integers. We passed in strings as well, which aren't actually primitive values in C++, so it was a little bit complicated. We went over returning primitives, returning strings, and I also will be providing that type chart, a link to that in the description, so that you can deal with any other primitives that are unique. I think next episode we'll look at doing maybe arrays or structs, passing those in, returning those. But other than that, if you have any questions, feedback, or criticism, be sure to leave a comment. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.